in the last lecture uh, we are talking about the modal spectral analysis. Uh, the modal spectral analysis is uh, performed taking help of the mode shifts and frequencies of the structures as we do in the case of uh, the uh, deterministic analysis. The whole idea again is to convert uh, the problem into a set of uncoupled single degree of freedom system and in that case one can write down the power spectral density function uh, relationship uh, for a single degree freedom system and then the responses obtained from there are then combined with the help of the relationship that exists between the uh, displacements in the structural coordinate system and the generalized displacements uh, through the uh, mode shape matrix. So, the essence of uh, the modal spectral analysis is that first we uh, decouple the equation of motion and once we decouple the equation of motion then we uh, obtain for each decoupled equation of motion the uh, frequency domain equation uh, which is shown in uh, equation 4.97A uh, and 4.97B. Uh, 4.97a and uh, then from there one can write down and, and, and p i omega uh, is uh, written in this way and if uh, r uh, if it is uh, multi supported excitation case then r is the matrix of the coefficients which is used and j i t is the the ith mode shape transpose of that m bar i is the uh, ith modal mass. So, uh, once we are able to uh, describe uh, p i omega that is the ith generalized load, uh, then using that one can write down s j i z j that is the cross power spectral density function between the two modal displacements j i and z j as h i into h j star then j i t m r s x double dot g r t m t and j j and both i and j vary from 1 to r where r is the number of mode shifts that we consider. So, using this expression one can write down the uh, cross power spectral density function between any two modal coordinates and then with the help of this we can make the matrix SZZ and uh, the diagonal terms of course will be SZI, ZI and I varying from 1 to R. Then after we have obtained SZZ, then we can obtain the power spectral density function matrix of displacements in the structural coordinate using this formula. It is coming from the above relationship that is x is equal to phi z and if it holds good then x x x will be equal to phi s z z phi t. Uh, many a time we do not take all the modes into consideration. For example, here we are considering the modes uh, 1 to r, uh, r is less than the number of degrees of freedom. So, in that case the phi matrix will be equal to m into r where m is the number of degrees of freedom and r is the uh, mode shapes that are considered. So, uh, using uh, this matrix, this uh, truncated matrix of the mode shape one can obtain the power spectral density function of the responses in structural coordinate by considering uh, not all modes, but only limited number of modes. An example problem is uh, solved here uh, to illustrate uh, the modal spectral analysis technique. 
this problem is the problem uh, that we had solved for the cable state bridge where uh, we want the power spectral density function of the degree of freedom 1 that is the left hand tower top and degree of freedom it will not be 2 it will be 3 that is the center of deck. And it is assumed that a uniform time lag of 5 second between the supports exists that is it is a multi support excitation case. So, for this problem the K matrix is a 3 by 3 K matrix that is the 2 uh, corresponding to the 2 displacements at the tower top and a vertical displacement at the center of the deck. And this is the mass matrix uh, corresponding to these degrees of freedom and this is the R matrix that is the coefficient matrix that, uh, that is uh, the displacements that occur at the non-support degrees of freedom due to uh, unit uh, displacement at the supports at the four supports. So, that constitutes the R matrix. So, with the help of that we uh, try to uh, obtain the power spectral density function matrix of the uh, degree of freedom 1 and degree of freedom not to 3. And we proceed uh, uh, with the equations that we described before. Now, in the case of uh, this multi support excitation what we will require is the uh, definition of the power spectral density function S x double dot g and the power spectral density function S x double dot g will be written in terms of the coherence function uh, or the cross correlation function between two supports. So, between the first and the second support it will be minus 5, 5 omega divided by 2 pi because the time lag is 5 second. Between the first and the third it will be minus 10 omega divided by 2 pi because the time lag is 10 second and uh, between the first and the uh, third uh, uh, fourth support it will be minus 15 omega by 2 pi. Uh, defining row 1, row 2, row 3 in this particular fashion one can write down the power spectral density function matrix for the excitation. Uh, as uh, in this particular form that is 1 by uh, 1 row 1 row 2 row 3 uh, so on and they, they successively because between uh, 2 and 3 support it will be the row 1 that will come into picture. So, uh, once we have written down this power spectral density function uh, then we can use this for uh, finding out the uh, power spectral density function of the load vector that we will see later. S x double dot g over here is a single it is not a matrix it is a single quantity the power spectral density function of say here we have taken the L centro earthquake. So, this is the power spectral density function of the L centro earthquake. Uh, so, S x double dot g in fact is multiplied with all of them. So, therefore, we have taken it out. The H 1 and H2 we written with the help of the first frequency and the second frequency. First frequency is 2.86, therefore, it will be omega n square minus omega square that is the first term, and the second term is i 2 eta omega n into omega. So, eta is 5 percent, therefore, it is 0 0.05 and omega 1 is 2.86. So, therefore, we in place of omega n we write down 2.86 and we have the uh, complex frequency response function for the first mode. Similarly, one can write down the uh, complex frequency response function for the second mode. Only thing that we do is that we replace the first frequency by the second frequency 5.85 and we uh, get the frequency response function for the second mode. Similarly, one can write down the frequency response functions for
for the third mode uh, and uh, taking the uh, third frequency. Uh, once uh, we have obtained these uh, uh, H1, H2, H3, then one can plug in these frequency response function into this equation that is H i and A H j star that now is known for any two modes and the j i t and j j they are also known that is the mode shifts uh, for any two modes and S x double dot g matrix has been now defined. Uh, so, we use uh, we put here the S x double dot g matrix R matrix I have shown you already. So, uh, you have the R matrix and the M matrix is known. Therefore, uh, S j i j j that is the cross power spectral density function between any two modal coordinates can be obtained with the help of the quantities that we have uh, just now uh, shown. Now, when all the uh, elements of the power spectral density function of SZZ are obtained in this particular fashion, then we construct the SZZ matrix and then obtain the uh, power spectral density function of SXX. So, using this particular uh, technique, we have uh, obtained the values of the power spectral density function uh, of the first displacement and the third displacement and the RMS value for the first displacement that is the at the top of the left hand tower that is in the modal analysis it gave 0 0.021 and from the direct analysis we obtained 0 0.021. So, they are same because we have taken all the three modes into consideration. Uh, similarly, for degree of freedom it will not be 2, for degree of freedom 3 uh, the modal analysis gave 0 0.015 and uh, the direct analysis also gave 0 0.015. The shape of the power spectral density function for uh, degree of freedom 1 uh, that is shown over here and we can see that the power spectral density function is uh, picking almost at the first frequency of the structure. Uh, this shows the cross power spectral density function uh, between uh, the uh, any uh, two uh, displacements that is between u1 and u2 and uh, uh, or rather u3 it will be u3 and this uh, cross power spectral density function the real part is this and the uh, imaginary part is this uh, as as we know that the cross power spectral density uh, functions uh, is generally uh, complex uh, in character uh, therefore it has a real part and an imaginary part and this shows the power spectral density function of the, uh, the top of the left tower and this shows the power spectral density function at the center of the deck. Next we uh, come to the spectral analysis uh, in state space. So, when we perform a state space analysis uh, then the equation uh, that we use is S z z and S z z is equal to H S f g f g H star t. Now, uh, this H is the frequency response function for the state space equation and you know now the uh, what is the frequency response function for the state space equation. Uh, so, it is written as I cap that is a identity matrix of size 2 n by 2 n 
and omega is the frequency minus a a matrix uh, that is uh, again 2 n by 2 n and if you recall the equation in the state space is equal to z dot is equal to a z plus f g a uh, is a, is of dimension 2 n by 2 n z is of dimension 2 n into 1 and f g also uh, is a vector of 2 n by 1 first n values are zeros and second uh, n values second set of n values are r x double dot g that we will and show you later. Now, what uh, we have to obtain is that S F G F G matrix and once we are able to find out the S F S F G S F G matrix that is the power spectral density function matrix of vector F G, then we can plug in uh, that matrix over here and h omega can be computed from this equation because a matrix is explicitly known and uh, uh, by inverting this uh, matrix we can get the uh, frf or the frequency response function matrix h uh, so let's see how we obtain the sf um, gsfg so this is uh, the F fg in the vector form that is the first n values are zeros and uh, then we have minus r x double dot g so it is of sign 2 n into 1 and uh, j d is defined as x and x dot that is the uh, states uh, of the system defined by the displacement and the velocity the s f g s f g matrix obviously would be 0 0 0 r s x double dot g r t because uh, here this last term is equal to r s x double dot g. So, power spectral density function corresponding to this will be r s x double dot g into r t where x x double dot g is again a the power spectral density function matrix of the excitation. Uh, now, if uh, now, this is partially correlated that is uh, the there is a time lag between the excitations. Then say for the case of 3 supports you will have the S x double dot g matrix defined as 1 row 1 row 2, 1 row 1 and 1 and on this side it will be symmetric and S x double dot g will be a single uh, a quantity that is the power spectral density function of the L centro earthquake in this particular case. And row 1 and row 2 depends upon the time lag. So, between the first two supports if the time lag is 5 second then row 1 will be exponential of minus 5 omega by 2 pi that is what we had shown before and between the first and the third support it will be row 2 and uh, it will be equal to uh, minus 10 omega divided by 2 pi exponential of that. So, that is how one can calculate S x double dot g matrix and one can plug in this into this uh, uh, expression and obtain the value of the S f g S f g. And once S f g S f g is obtained then using the equation uh, that you have described before one can get the values of S z S z. Now, S z S z in fact contains S x x, S x dot x x dot, S x dot x and S x x dot uh, because z is defined like this. Therefore, from uh, the S z z uh, matrix which will be of 2 n by 2 n size, this will be n by n size, this will be n by n size. So, uh, we will get uh, 2 n by 2 n uh, matrix. So, we can choose the appropriate terms from these matrix to obtain the power spectral density function uh, of any response quantity in the uh, structural coordinate that is x. So, and if we were wanting to um, uh, know the 
velocity, power spectral density function of velocity, then we can select the appropriate terms from this matrix. Uh, it is uh, um, to be noted that if I add up Sx dot x and x x dot, if I add up these two, then the addition would be equal to 0 because we know that the cross power spectral density function between the displacement and velocity, the uh, summation of uh, these uh, two quantities, they turn out to be 0 that you have proved before. So, the, in the state space formulation, one can also obtain uh, the response uh, in this particular way. Uh, we have uh, solved a problem uh, here. Uh, this problem is uh, the problem in which the top and the first floor, uh, these two uh, displacements are considered and uh, the power spectral density functions for these uh, two uh, displacements uh, are the uh, responses uh, that we look for. So, here is the A matrix for the system and this A matrix we have generated before while solving the same problem for deterministic ground motion and then using the formulation that we just described, uh, we obtained the RMS value of the degree of freedom 1 that is uh, for the uh, top floor displacement and degree of freedom 4 that is the first floor displacements. So, we obtain uh, this by three methods uh, in which the, this one is the modal spectral analysis that we just described before. This is the direct analysis uh, in which we uh, do not use the uh, mode superposition technique, but uh, to take the entire K, M and C matrix to obtain the responses and this is the state space solution uh, that we just described. And we can see that the RMS values obtained by the three different methods, they are uh, almost the same. Similarly, for degree of freedom 4 that is a first floor displacement, the RMS values are again uh, quite comparable, they are uh, close to each other. So, thus uh, we can see that uh, one can obtain the uh, power spectral density function of response of a particular structure uh, by different methods. Uh, for example, one can use uh, the direct method uh, using the second order differential equation and uh, there the input that we required is m, k and c and once we know the uh, matrices m, k, c then from there one can obtain the frequency response function matrix H and then uh, obtain the power spectral density function matrix of excitation and that uh, it depends uh, on whether the excitations are, are a single support excitation or a multi support excitation. If it is a multi support excitation, then from Sx double dot G that is the uh, power spectral density function of the specular earthquake, uh, this uh, power, uh, what you call quantity and the time lag between the supports uh, and using a coherence function, one can construct the power spectral density function matrix of the excitations. And once it is uh, uh, known, then one can straight away obtain the power spectral density function matrix of the responses. In the case of modal analysis, uh, in addition to MCK matrix, we must know also the uh, mode shape matrix and using the mode shape matrix, one can decouple the equation of motion into a single degree of freedom equation and then uh, use the uh, relevant expression 
for finding out the cross power spectral density function between any two generalized coordinates and with the help of those uh, cross power spectral density function matrices defined uh, one can obtain the power spectral density function matrix of uh, the uh, uh, generalized coordinate that is SZZ matrix. And uh, in terms of the structural coordinate, the power spectral density function uh, is obtained uh, by simply multiplying, pre multiplying the SZZ matrix with phi and post multiplying with phi t. So, that is the modal analysis technique and for the state space analysis, the H matrix that is, uh, is different than the H matrix that we obtain for the second order differential equation. And once we obtain the H matrix, then one has to find out SFG, SFG matrix, how we obtain SFG, SFG matrix that I have described and one can obtain the SZZ matrix that contains also the power you know, spectral density function of velocity along with the power spectral density function of displacements. And depending upon the requirement, one can choose uh, from the matrix the relevant terms to obtain the power spectral density function of any response quantity. Now, for the previous problem, uh, this is the power spectral density function of the uh, response of the top displacement and this is the cross power spectral density function between the top displacement and the first floor displacement. The real part of this cross power spectral density function is shown. Similarly, we have a uh, imaginary part for this cross power spectral density function. Now, the uh, in the state space, one can obtain the uh, responses using a, again modal analysis. Now, for that, say this is the A matrix uh, in the state space formulation. So, we write down Z to be is equal to phi into Q, where phi is the eigenvalues and eigen or other eigen vectors of the matrix A. So, this will be of size 2 n by m provided we consider uh, the m number of uh, the modes, but if we consider all the modes then it will be 2 n by 2 n matrix. And uh, phi inverse phi of course, will be a identity matrix of size 2 n by 2 n. So, phi inverse A phi uh, that is equal to a diagonal matrix of uh, size 2 n by 2 n and the diagonal terms are the eigen values of matrix A. Therefore, using uh, this relationship phi inverse uh, A into phi, we can decouple the equation of motion in this particular form that is q i dot is equal to lambda i q i plus f bar g i, where uh, the lambda i is the ith eigen value of the matrix A and q i is the generalized ith generalized coordinate and f bar g i is uh, the ith generalized load vector or rather load not vector. So, f bar uh, g i is obtained like this phi inverse f g and ith element of that is f bar g i. And uh, once we have uh, this relationship that is the uh, phi f bar g i is equal to uh, uh, phi inverse f g, then one can find out uh, the power spectral density function of f bar g i uh, simply uh, by finding out SFG, SFG and multiply it uh, pre multiply it by phi in inverse and then post multiply it by phi inverse t. 
and once we do that we get uh, f bar g i and once we get uh, the f bar g i then q i omega or q j omega that means for a particular mode the generalized coordinate in frequency domain is related uh, to the f bar g j uh, through the frequency response function for the jth mode and frequency response function in the th mode is uh, given the, as this i omega minus lambda j inverse where lambda j is the jth eigen value of the a matrix. So, we uh, know a j omega or in other words the frequency response function for any mode and once we know that then we can use simply for a single degree of freedom equation uh, the power spectral density function relationship between the response and the excitation that is s q q is equal to h omega s f bar g j into h omega star. Uh, this h omega is, is, is for the jth mode if, if this is uh, the jth mode and s q q will be the uh, quantity of the uh, or power spectral density function of the jth generalized coordinate. And one can obtain the uh, s q y q j uh, by simply taking the i th mode for this frequency response function and j th mode for the uh, this frequency response function uh, for which we are obtaining the complex conjugate. So, that is how all the elements of the s q q matrix that is written over here can be obtained and once we know the s q q matrix then one can obtain the s z z matrix uh, by simply pre and post multiplying by the uh, mode shapes and the transpose of the mode shapes uh, with s q q. So, uh, that is how one can also obtain a modal spectral analysis uh, using the state space formulation. Now, we have seen that there are many ways that we can perform the spectral analysis and uh, these uh, spectral analysis uh, uh, is uh, uh, or can be obtained for a single support excitation and multi support excitation uh, uh, by carefully obtaining the power spectral density function matrix of the excitations. Whenever we have uh, the multi support excitation case then coherence function uh, must be defined. The different methods that you have described uh, can be programmed in MATLAB following a particular uh, flow chart and uh, um, using certain relevant inputs. And at the end of the book that from which we have, op, we have uh, made all the uh, slides in the end of the chapter of the spectral analysis. Uh, the flow chart is given uh, with the help of which one can obtain a or write down a program for the spectral analysis of structure by using uh, all methods. So, let me explain that flow chart here. So, first what we do is that we consider uh, we take the structure and obtain the uh, stiffness matrix of the structure considering all the degrees of freedom that is the rotations also are considered. And uh, from this matrix we obtain a k matrix which is a condensed stiffness matrix corresponding to the dynamic degrees of freedom which are generated the translations. And at that time we store in the program 
this relationship that exists between the theta degrees of freedom and the displacement degrees of freedom uh, which is related through a matrix A and this matrix A can be easily obtained from the condensation relationship. And M is the diagonal generally the diagonal mass matrix, but it need not be general, uh, diagonal. It can be uh, also a matrix which is a coupled matrix depending upon the problem which you have seen before. Now, from uh, next we obtain once we obtain the, the stiffness matrix corresponding to all displacements, uh, then we obtain the R matrix and uh, if it is a multi support excitation case, then in this K matrix we consider also the degrees of freedom at the supports that is the translational degrees of freedom at the supports uh, in the sway direction. And once we have that matrix, then from that matrix one can obtain a R matrix which is uh, also stored and this R matrix is of the form of minus KSS inverse uh, that is the uh, inverse of the non-support degrees of freedom uh, the stiffness matrix corresponding to that and KSG that is the coupling matrix between the non-support degrees of freedom and the support degrees of freedom. So, after we have obtained uh, for the multi support excitation case this R and it is stored, then we have the non support uh, degrees of freedom and corresponding to that the stiffness matrix and the mass matrix that we use for the solution. We obtain the phi matrix from these KSS and M and uh, omega the natural frequencies. Then from this also we can obtain phi r that I have discussed before that is if you these phi is the mode shapes for displacements whereas phi r could be a mode shape uh, uh, matrix or mode shape vector for the response quantity of interest and how to obtain that that we have described before that is if I subject the structure to a force of m omega square where m is the matrix and omega i square uh, is the ith frequency uh, then uh, we the response that we get displacement response that will correspond to phi and uh, the solution for any response quantity that is bending moment shear force uh, taken out uh, from that solution that will give the mode shape coefficient for that response quantity. So, here depending upon the response quantities that we want uh, we can have a phi r matrix and that can be stored. From uh, the frequencies one can obtain alpha and beta. Uh, coefficient and then construct the required C matrix. So, once we have that then one can obtain H omega matrix that is required uh, using K, M and C. If we are not interested in all the response then the reduced frequency response function matrix H bar omega uh, that can be obtained. Then for each mode one can obtain H i omega and for that what we will require is the uh, modal mass at the uh, at a particular mode. And after we have obtained these two quantities uh, then we can go for different kinds of analysis. The first kind of analysis is the direct spectral analysis where h bar omega uh, is the complex frequency response function matrix for the degrees of freedom which are of interest that is we use the reduced uh, complex frequency response function matrix. SX double dot g matrix uh, that is constructed with the help of the 
power given power spectral density function of the ground motion and the coherence functions from which we obtain rho 1, rho 2, etcetera. And that is how SX double dot G matrix uh, is uh, determined. And rho yj uh, that must be expressed with the help of an expression uh, for the coherence function taken uh, for, from the literature, uh, which is appropriate for uh, the particular site. And then one can obtain the SJIJJ that is the cross power spectral density function between any two generalized uh, displacement and once we know the S j i z j then one can obtain S j z matrix from that and if you use that S j z matrix then uh, this particular uh, equation uh, uses the mode shapes to find out the SXX that is the power spectral density function matrix in the structural coordinate. So, uh, this constitute this one, uh, uh, this one and this one uh, uh, sorry this one uh, they these two constitute the modal spectral analysis part of it. If we are interested in finding out the power spectral density function matrix for any other response quantities than the displacement response quantities then uh, that can be also obtained by pre and post multiplying SZZ matrix with the phi r matrix. Phi r matrix is the mode shape matrix for that response quantity that we have stored before. Uh, uh, then if we are wanting to obtain the power spectral density uh, function matrix for absolute displacement uh, which we again we had discussed before. Uh, we have two kinds of displacement one is a relative displacement with respect to the base other is the total displacement by considering the support displacement also. Uh, if you are interested in finding out so that then what we require is an additional expression which is S x double dot G x that is the cross power spectral density function matrix between the excitations and the displacements. And uh, this is also given in the form of an equation which uh, we have explained before. So, we obtain that and also keep it in the memory if we are required to obtain the power spectral density function matrix of absolute displacement. Next uh, if we are wanting to uh, go for the state space analysis then A matrix must be first generated from the K M and C matrix. Then uh, we obtain the Eigen values and Eigen vectors of matrix A and uh, obtain the frequency response function matrix uh, using matrix A and an identity matrix uh, I. Then we obtain SFG SFG matrix that is the power spectral density function matrix of FG vector which consists of 0 and minus R x double dot G and how to construct SFG SFC that I have described just before. So, we obtain that and store it and then go for a direct analysis in which S z z is state I obtained uh, by using uh, this uh, power spec, uh, your um, frequency response function matrix and SFG SFG matrix and uh, the uh, comp, uh, transpose of the complex conjugate of H matrix. Uh, note that SZZ matrix contains SXX, SX dot X dot and the cross uh, 
spectral density function between displacement and velocity and velocity and displacement. Sum of them is equal to 0 and uh, depending upon whether you require the power spectral density function of displacement or velocity, we can choose the appropriate quantities from these two matrices. So, that is the direct uh, state space analysis that is uh, direct state space power spectral density function uh, approach. If you are wanting to find out uh, the or use the modal state space analysis uh, uh, in uh, the spectral analysis, then we obtain for each mode the complex frequency response function and this will require the knowledge of the Eigen value of the uh, particular mode. This Eigen value is generally a complex quantity. So, once we obtain uh, this uh, complex frequency response function for the jth mode, then S q y q j that is the cross power spectral density function between any two generalized coordinate can be uh, written in this particular fashion that is h i into h j star and s f bar g i f bar g j. Now, this f bar g i and f bar g j is obtained in this particular fashion say f bar g is equal to phi inverse f g and uh, s f bar g s f bar g matrix would be given by phi inverse 0 0 0 r x double dot g r t and uh, how to obtain s x double dot g for a multi support excitation uh, that I have described before in which you have the uh, cross correlation function terms rho 1, rho 2 etcetera. And from this one can choose uh, this f bar g f bar g will be a 2 n by 2 n matrix and from this matrix one can choose any uh, cross power spectral density function term between two generalized load f bar g i and f bar g j. So, that is how uh, one can obtain uh, this term over here and uh, uh, this is of course, stored before uh, and uh, this matrix also is stored. And once we have uh, the knowledge of S q y q j, then we can form the S q q matrix that is the power spectral density function matrix in the generalized coordinate and obtain uh, the power spectral density function. Uh, matrix in the state space uh, form that is S z z uh, which will be equal to phi S q q and phi t and this S z z matrix will contain both x and x dot. So, uh, uh, from that uh, one can obtain all the power spectral density function of displacement, velocity and any response quantity of interest. So, we see that uh, the uh, frequency domain spectral analysis can be carried out in different ways and uh, the uh, method that one uses depends upon uh, the response quantity of interest and the way uh, one wants to solve the problem. It can be uh, obtained in the direct form in which uh, either one can use a state space formulation or one can take the second order differential equation. In both uh, cases, the C matrix is to be constructed by obtaining alpha and beta uh, using two modes of the structure. And once we obtain the C matrix, then one can perform a uh, direct spectral analysis. If we are wanting to obtain the uh, spectral analysis in modal 
coordinates or we, what we call as the modal spectral analysis. Then we have to find out the mode shifts and frequencies of the structure and this is usually done for systems which has many degrees of freedom therefore inversion of uh, the H matrix and construction of the H matrix that becomes somewhat tedious and therefore uh, one can go for a modal spectral analysis and uh, we can uh, take only a limited number of modes uh, that is maybe the first 5 or 10 modes of the system and then obtain the first the power spectral density function matrix in generalized coordinate uh, using the complex frequency response function for each mode and uh, constructing a, a matrix uh, of the generalized forces and for that what uh, one has to obtain is the Sx double dot G matrix that is the matrix of excitations if it is a multi support excitation. And once we have obtained that then one can find out the uh, power spectral density function uh, 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 or cross power spectral density function between any two uh, uh, supports in the uh, generalized uh, system. And with the help of that one can obtain the cross power spectral density function between any two uh, generalized coordinates and from that one can obtain the SQQ matrix and once the SQQ matrix that is the matrix of uh, the power spectral density function matrix of uh, the generalized coordinates that is known then one can obtain the corresponding power spectral density function matrix in the structural coordinate by uh, using the modal transformation rule that is SXX will be equal to phi into SZZ into phi T. The uh, state space formulation can be used uh, in uh, many cases where we uh, may be interested in the velocity that is the power spectral density uh, functions of the velocity of the um, uh, degree of freedom. Uh, then uh, the state space formulation is advantageous and again in that case one can go for a direct state space analysis. And when we obtain uh, the state space analysis uh, in the direct form uh, for uh, the spectral analysis, then uh, a H omega matrix that is a complex frequency response function matrix uh, that is of different form than the complex frequency function matrix that we use for the second order differential equation. Here, uh, it uh, uses simply the A matrix uh, for obtaining the uh, complex frequency fun response function matrix for the system. Once it is known then use we ag uh, again use the same uh, formulation to obtain the SZZ matrix uh, that is the um, PSDF matrix of the state uh, space or the states of the system X and X dot. So, in the SZZ matrix uh, we uh, get SXX as well as SX dot X dot and uh, depending upon the requirement one can uh, choose any term from these matrices to obtain uh, the power spectral density function of the required response. In uh, obtaining and in, in doing this particular formulation uh, one has to obtain a uh, power spectral density function matrix of uh, F bar G uh, that is uh, the generalized load which consists of uh, the first n terms of that will be 0 and second n terms will be equal to minus Rx double dot G and how we can obtain 
and the ASF bar G, SF bar G that you have described before. Uh, finally, uh, one can also obtain a, a modal analysis in state space for performing the spectral analysis and in that case we use the mode shapes and frequencies of uh, the uh, matrix A and with the help of that one can obtain the uh, responses in the uh, generalized uh, coordinate Q and or in, or, or in other words we obtain the cross power spectral density function between any two generalized coordinate from that we obtain SQQ matrix and then we can obtain SJ matrix. Mm -hmm.